Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly, all the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Bryce Williams puts his head down, drives the ball, third defender comes, can't score it. Put back in on a tip dunk, high in the air above the cylinder, on a jam with the right hand, Jawan Gary. Runners second and third, two outs, one and two the count. The pitch from Chambers, Cope golfs one to center and deep, going back Delgadillo, and it's gone! Three run, home run, Emerson Cope, make it 5-2 Nebraska. Brian Webb with the 3-0 pitch. Drilled into center field. Long run again for Verduzco. Onto the track. Looking up, and it is gone! Home run, Josh Karens. Second home run of the night. This one a three-run blast to right center field. Chili throws down low. Markowski kicks it out to Jazz. Knocked away by Marshall. Seven to shoot, six to shoot. Chili for three. You! Betcha! Oscars take their first lead of the game with 30 seconds left. Here is your host, Jessica Cooty, on the Huskers Radio Network. Hey there, everybody. Happy Friday to you. Welcome in to a short edition of Sports Nightly here tonight. I'm Jessica Cooty. Greg Sharp is currently calling baseball. I think first pitch just underway out at Haymarket Park for a three-game series between the Huskers hosting Nichols this weekend. But because we have men's basketball coming up tonight in the Big Ten tournament, we do have just an hour-long show here leading into, I like to call this the pregame show, into the pregame show before we'll hand things off to Kent Pavelka and Jake Muleheis. And Jake is going to stop by here in just a few minutes and uh, get us set for the matchup. When we signed off the air last night, we did not know who the Huskers would play, but uh, it ends up being Indiana. They hold off Penn State 61-59 to and a little bit of a slugfest last night. So that it will be Indiana for the third time this season. So we're going to dive into all that matchup coming up here in just a few minutes. Currently, we've got Ohio State and Illinois. Uh, they are the game playing before Nebraska. Nebraska and so uh, the Huskers will play about 25 minutes after this game concludes it's in the first half about I think just under eight minutes left yeah 739 in the first 2317 Illinois leading Ohio State so approximately eight o'clock but we're gonna have the pregame show coming up for you about seven o'clock other scores of the day Purdue knocks off Michigan State uh, 67 52. I know that that's not right. 70. So Wisconsin beats Northwestern 70 to 61. I can't read my handwriting, but Purdue ends up winning over Michigan State. That was a good basketball game. So Purdue advances, Wisconsin advances. Um, but I uh, got to think Northwestern, uh, all the Big Ten folks seem to think they are in the NCAA tournament. Uh, so Huskers looking to maybe uh, make some noise up in Minneapolis and improve the seating. Going into the NCAA tournament, Nebraska's done enough to be in, but they are currently on that 8-9 seed. So hopefully if they can go on a run, they can improve that seeding. Other big news uh, regarding Big Ten basketball, Jawan Howard has been let go uh, as Michigan's head basketball coach. And it was uh, one of the worst seasons in 60 years. They finished last in the Big Ten for the first time since 66-67. They lost their final nine games, including last night. Um, in the Big Ten tournament, or two nights ago in the Big Ten tournament, eight and 24 overall. So they have parted ways. Jawan Howard is out at Michigan. Okay, so we've got about a. 45 minutes, 50 minutes or so before we will hand things over for the pregame show, but did want to get a little bit of a preview here on Sports Nightly with Jake Muleheisen. So they will be on the call for the game. He will be on the call for the game uh, with Kent Pavelka coming up here and pregame show starting at 7. So we welcome in Jake Muleheisen standing by in Minneapolis. Uh, Jake, why does it feel like it's been forever since the Huskers have played a basketball game? eternity since we've played I mean we just been kind of sitting around here in Minneapolis I know the guys have probably felt it as well where it's just like get this game here there's the hype the excitement you know we have the double bye but yeah it has felt forever since uh, we watched this team play you know originally coach Hoiberg I know was maybe not thrilled about that bye week going into the Michigan game but then he told me this week that it, it ended up being a, a really good thing for this team Health-wise, just fatigue-wise, um, how healthy is this team? How ready are they to maybe go on a run here at in up in Minneapolis? Well, I agree, and we we talked a little bit about it after the Michigan game with with Coach Hoiberg about 
the bye week leading in uh, before the Penn State game and then this that last one before Michigan. And, you know, you looked at the schedule before a season started. You go, man, this – how they set the buys up and the schedule, you're kind of upset about it, but it actually really worked out in our favor where a super front-loaded schedule and then with how well we played, it was kind of nice to have those breaks. And then you have get some guys rested before uh, the mission game, get some nicks and bruises and, and get healed up physically, and then mentally you get rested up as well. And then you have five days off before coming to Minneapolis, so another break before starting the Big Ten tournament. But it not only gives you time to rest before conference tournament, it gives you time to to kind of get some rest before the big one, the NCAA tournament. So I think it has worked out really well, and hopefully these guys aren't rusty. Hopefully they're just just gassed and ready to play. Well, the big storyline of this week, uh, Fred Hoiberg, co-coach of the year. I think everybody listening on this program and all of us here at the Oscars Radio Network think it should have lost the co and just been coach of the year. But either way, uh, co-coach of the year in this conference, this team was originally picked to finish 12th here. They are the three seed in this tournament. What can you say about the job Coach Hoiberg has done with this group this season? Well, it's been tremendous. And I, you know, obviously we're a little biased, but I think he should have <laughs> won it outright. But you know, Coach Painter deserved it as well, but for, for Coach Hoiberg to get a share of it just shows what type of job that he did this year, as you mentioned, picked to finish 12th. But I think we're a really talented team. I don't think we have the talent, you know, that the Purdue's have or, or the Illinois have. They, have. they have some, you know, lottery picks on their roster. I don't think we have that, but from top to bottom, you know, one through eight, we're really talented. But what they've done just on both sides of the floor to put us in position, to come in here, get the three seed in the Big Ten tournament, and set us up for hopefully a good run in the NCAA tournament. He's done a fantastic job. His staff, his assistants, all the support staff are tremendous. So kudos to him, and he's, he's, it was well-deserved. How good was it going back to the Michigan game? You know, uh, prior to that, a few matchups. Didn't see the numbers, I guess, point total-wise from rink mass that we had been accustomed to seeing throughout the season. But then he, he comes out against Michigan and has a, a pretty productive night. How good was it to see him have that kind of offensive night going into this tournament? It was great. I mean, I think he was lacking some confidence before that Michigan game. I think, And I think he was a little bit tired. I just, I do. I think that he was worn out. We rode him hard you know, in January and February. So I think he got some rest. I think that helped tremendously. But to see that ball go through the rim, it's it's huge, especially before postseason play. So to see him be really productive scoring the basketball was just great to see because, you know, you, you've seen this a lot, Jessica, where when a team or an individual gets some confidence in them, that can go so far, especially heading to postseason play. When you have some swagger, when you come out thinking that every shot you take is going to go in, as a player or as a group, that, that can bode really well for this Nebraska team heading into, heading into March here. Okay, so one of the things that the tournament setting, and a double bye is great, right, especially if you want to make a run to a championship game, but it can also maybe, you mentioned it earlier, maybe um, set up for you to be a little bit rusty, and we've already seen that. We saw it throughout the women's tournament, some teams that had the buys get knocked off, get upset. Uh, we've seen it here this week. Um, how, do you, how do you, I guess, combat that? How do you come ready to play despite maybe, um, and, and some other teams maybe having some, mo some momentum having those games under their belt, how do the Huskers maybe combat that and be ready to play tonight? Yeah, that's a, we were talking about that. Kent and I were walking over here where, you know, obviously Indiana, didn't play a great game last night, but they've already played in the confines of the target center. I think that can be a little bit of an advantage with those teams that have played Thursday. So how do you how do you fix that? How do you combat that from a team that does have that double by, you know, coming in here on Friday? I think that's just it's controlling what you can control. And I, you, we've heard Coach Hoiberg talk a lot about that. His staff, where our identity has always been, when we're playing well, our, our identity is on the defensive side. So if we come out. And we throw that first punch. We're the more aggressive, physical, you know, Kent's used the word relentless team those first 10 minutes. I don't think that we'll get on our heels at all. I think that we'll put that team on Indiana that, that played yesterday on their heels. So we can throw that first punch. I think that's the way you can combat that. We may miss some shots early, but just I go back to that confidence factor. We know we can knock some down. So if we miss them early, just have some confidence that those will start falling later in the game. Okay, so it's also really hard to beat a team three times, right? So uh, what goes into that? How does a team like Nebraska go about beating a team like Indiana three times this time around? It is really hard. I mean, you saw it. I mean, Penn State beat Indiana twice, and they obviously fell short by two points last night. It's just difficult. And, and 
I think it goes back to that to, to controlling what you can control, and and I know that this team will have a little bit of uh, different wrinkles against Indiana tonight, and and if Indiana is without the help of Trey Galloway again, that's a different wrinkle for them as well. And they have Xavier Johnson coming back that he did not play in round two against Nebraska, but. I think we'll throw some different wrinkles out, some different lineups. We're playing a little bit different lineup than when we played against them with with, uh, with Juwan, Alec, Mast, uh, Bryce, and Tominaga is starting. So I think we'll have some different wrinkles. But it's, again, controlling the name on the front of our jersey. I know it sounds super cliche, but when you play a team for the third time, they're going to try to have that, that quote-unquote revenge factor in their mental mindset. But you saw them say that after the game. You saw Leo, who made the tip in last night, say, well, we have the revenge factor against Nebraska too. Well, guess what? We're pretty motivated, too, and we want to prove to everybody that we're here for March and we're ready to play in the postseason. So if you go back to that last matchup, it was a huge one because it was the first one that the Huskers got on the road, and it was a career night for Jamarcus Lawrence. But in terms of, and we saw this last week with the women making a run to the championship game, got tremendous contributions from the bench. In a tournament setting, how much more important does that become, having those contributions from the bench, like a Jamarcus Lawrence, like a C.J. Wilcher? Yeah, bench is huge, and you know our guys that come off the bench. You have really the two energy guys. You got Sam Hoiberg and Jamarcus Lawrence, who are energy and come out and really play that tough nose defense. And you mentioned uh, with Lawrence having that really good game scoring the basketball at Indiana. He's got to he's got to have that in his arsenal in this postseason tournament as well. But then CJ, he's got to heat up. I mean, he's struggled a little bit the last handful of games, but we need that guy that we saw against Wisconsin when he dropped 22 with majority of those points in the second half. But a, a big punch off the bench can just lift that team. If you're kind of struggling, if both teams are having a, an issue scoring the basketball, if it's, a, if it's kind of a rock fight to start, if you have that spark off the bench, then that can just spread throughout the team and help catapult a team to victory. So we need those guys, Sam and Jamarcus and CJ. They need to have a huge game tonight against the Hoosiers. Okay, what are the, the biggest keys for the Huskers to get this one done tonight? I mean, you got to stop their front court you, you, with with Renew and where. I mean, those two guys are some dudes, and you got to keep them off the glass first and foremost. And then you got to really make sure that we're we're, we're we cannot get in foul trouble. I mean, Alec and Mass they cannot get in foul trouble against those guys. So it'll be interesting to see how the refs call it. Offensively, I want to see us attack inside out, much how we did against the Wolverines, where we're pounded inside. Make where and Renew guard us too, and if Mast. And Gary can pull those guys out and knock some perimeter shots. That would be huge. But I think it's going to come down to our, our physicality on defense. And we have to value possessions because Indiana, they really have a tough time scoring in the half court. So we value possessions. Don't give them any freebies in transition and really do a good job of defensive rebound. And we'll, we'll get out of here with a win. So, and then just kind of in the grand scheme of things, Huskers are in the NCAA tournament. They've done enough to get in no matter what happens tonight. But how right now, sitting on that 8-9 seed, how much do you think that maybe could improve winning two or three games up there in Minneapolis? That's a great question where I think if we win a couple here, I think we might be able to move to a 7. If we win the whole shebang, we might move to a 6. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm again, have the Husker colored glasses on, but... You know, you'd love to get off that 8-9 spot to get to a 7 uh, to, to, to potentially have the 2 seed the next round. But I think if we win a couple here, I think I think we do. I think we deserve it. I think, in all honesty, I think we deserve to be in the 7 spot today with our with our SOR and, and what we've put together from a resume. I mean, I know, I know a lot of people have talked about our lack of road wins, but if you go through, you know, that top 30 list and the net, you know, a lot of, not a lot of teams have won more than three on the road. We have a, we have a really good resume our quad, our quad one wins are up there with some of the best teams in the country. We have not lost a three or four quad game at all. So hopefully we can get to that seven spot. And if we win a couple of games here, I think that, that really could help our, our chances of that. How's KP? How's Ken? Is he ready to roll? Is he well, nervous? Ken's, Ken's always ready to roll. He's always nervous. I mean, <laughs> I'm, he's, he's getting all his papers and ready to rock and roll. I mean, I mean, ask me this question next week when we're sitting courtside <laughs> at the NCAA tournament game, and it might be a little bit... Uh, it might be escalated a little bit. <laughs> is the watch on or off right now? Uh, is your yeah, his watch is on right now? But I'm betting, <laughs> I'm betting in about uh, what time is it? In about two and a half hours, that puppy's coming off. <laughs> oh, awesome! Can't wait to hear it, man. It seems like uh, it's been a while since we've seen the Huskers play a basketball game, which means it's been a while since I feel like we've heard you guys on the air. So can't wait to hear you guys coming up here in uh, just a few minutes. Thanks for your time, Jake. Hey, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it.
And uh, Nebraska postseason basketball is presented by John Henry's. John Henry's is proud to be the official plumbing, HVAC, and electrical partner of the Huskers, now serving Omaha. We're going to step aside for a break here on Sports Nightly. Up next, we're talking Nebraska women's basketball with the voice of the Husker women's hoops, Matt Coatney. Keep it here. Let's face it, nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery? without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor. Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe. Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya, a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show Hair Grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair growth saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair growth today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com. If you're an unconditional, wholehearted, and ever so loyal Husker fan, you deserve to pay like one everywhere you go with the free FNBO Husker Visa debit card. Fuel your fandom all season and beyond with a debit card just for you. It's free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get your free Husker Visa debit card at any branch or at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. As a fan, you wear your jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. There's a place for people like you. The Cox Fan Zone. Play NFL Pick'em and Collegiate Pick'em for a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card each week or even a $500 Visa gift card grand prize. Hey, Oscar fans, this is Greg Sharp. Say Fan Zone in your Contour Voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit cox.com slash fan zone. Go Big Red. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Husker fans, the women's basketball postseason coverage starts this week with the Big Ten Tournament. Your postseason coverage is presented by John Henry's, the official plumbing, HVAC, and electrical partner of Nebraska Athletics, bringing you all the action on the Huskers radio network. Broadcast coverage starts on Thursday and will follow the Huskers as they advance through the brackets. Listen online or on the air. Go Big Red. Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. 
Hey, Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high-performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game-changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. Well, we've talked a lot about it, but what a special run. Nebraska women's basketball just went on in the Big Ten tournament and still uh, lots to come for this team as we move towards the NCAA tournament but an idle week this week but we thought we'd get the thoughts of Matt Coatney the voice of Nebraska women's basketball to recap that magical run but also to look ahead so Coatney thanks for joining us man what a weekend it was really something uh, Jess one of my uh, favorite tournaments uh, really I've ever been a part of it you know it really was uh, I think more uh, in the final four, a lot of the final fours I've been to, a police escort for the Huskers on the final day, almost 19,000 in Target Center. Uh, and then an overtime game on big CBS. CBS had never televised the Big Ten championship for women's basketball before. It was a big-time atmosphere, and my goodness, did that team leave it all out there. I, I know Husker Nation is very proud of the team. I've never been prouder of the team. For four uh, days, four games, and getting to the championship game and, and almost beating the uh, number one seed, I'm sure, in Iowa, it was, it was incredible. Yeah, you mentioned the CBS. I got, I, it hit me a little bit when you heard the March Madness theme song and, and it was just right. such a big deal to be on CBS. And it, you know, at some point, this will stop being like the first, you know, the first on Fox and the first on CBS and all that. But it was just, it was pretty special to, to see that and to hear that and, and to see the production that went behind the tournament being on CBS. And it just, again, I guess goes the tip of the hat to the growth and the, the fact that these networks are making women's basketball a priority. It has really been an exceptional year across all women's sports. Of course, you take a look at Volleyball Day in Nebraska back uh, to start the season back in August, all the way through what um, you know the signing of Jordy Ball has done for attendance, and unfortunately she got hurt, but the season tickets were for Husker softball. And now you take a look at what Nebraska women's basketball and, and throughout all of women's basketball, what is going on. Yeah, you know, I heard something uh, the other day, and I, and I read an interesting article that right now the most intriguing people, coaches and players, are in women's basketball heading into March Madness. And I think a lot of that has to do with some of the early outs for the NBA for the men's players. And, you know, Mike Krzyzewski retiring, a lot of the longtime coaches you're used to seeing on the men's side are out. And now, you know, you look at Kim Mulkey or Don Staley and then the Caitlin Clark story, and there really are a lot of interesting storylines, and the viewership uh, and the interest is showing it. Got to think another record-breaking season for the NCAA tournament viewership, no doubt about it. Well, let's uh, recap the run and just what, what – clicked what came together you know they were the Huskers were starting to play some of their best basketball before the tournament but then you really saw them take it to another level what did you see kind of them start to put together that allowed for them to make that run and ultimately almost almost end up walking away with the title on Sunday 
well, you're not going to play four games in four days without getting contributions from everybody. And you saw a different person step up just about every day. Callan Hank takes five charges. Now, Callan Hank has been a much better defensive player in her sophomore year, but no one saw her taking five charges in four games. You take a look at Ani Stewart, who didn't even play Friday against Maryland uh, or Saturday against Maryland, comes in on Sunday and just absolutely is on fire um, against Iowa. You take a look at a Natalie Potts, who didn't play like a freshman. She certainly played like a, a, a veteran player, and it was very, very key. Jazz Shelley was unbelievable, um, certainly showed she should have been first team all Big Ten, and then Alexis Markowski was just absolutely a warrior. So it's stepping up by multiple people on the team. Everybody on that team had a contribution in some ways in those four days. And then the stars stepping up, Potts, Markowski, and Shelley shining on the biggest stage. That had a lot to do with it. It's pretty crazy. At one point, I was taking note of the lineups that were on the floor in that championship game. And with Iowa, you had like three grad seniors and Caitlin Clark. And then we had like two, two or three freshmen and, and Callan Hake, who's a sophomore. But boy, they were not backing down. Natalie Potts was unbelievable. She was spectacular on Sunday. You, you could tell she relishes those moments. She is. She's a winner. And, you know, she's got that little something, something on her face during the biggest occasions. You know, she and uh, Gabby Marshall and Kate Martin were all kind of staring each other down. I said on air at one point that uh, Kate Martin and Caitlin Clark had to leave the lane because Natalie Potts was staring them down. <laughs> it was an intense game. No love lost there between Nebraska and Iowa. Respect, to be sure. But uh, that's, a, that's a heck of a rivalry that has turned into, you know, Nebraska won the first eight games in that series after the Huskers joined the Big Ten. So, um, you know, it's, it's not just a recent rivalry. It goes back pretty far. But the, the job Natalie Potts did in that tournament, I mean, nine block shots. You know, she's got length. She came off the bounce a lot more. She was a tough rebounder. And, we, we, of course, we know about her ability to uh, play defense. I mean, she really shut down Cheyenne Sellers in that Maryland game with a, a great job on a defensive switch by Amy Williams going to a box and one in that fourth quarter taking that tall Maryland guard really out of what she wanted to do. So Potts was, was just amazing in the tournament. And Logan Nisley, too, another freshman, just ice in her veins, knocking down some huge threes. Um, really, after that first game, she made some really big buckets throughout the entire tournament. Yeah, not only that, Jess, and you're, you're spot on, but her defense really shone through at times in that tournament. And Logan's defense was behind her offense like most freshmen are. Natalie Potts is kind of the rare breed where her defense might have been a fan of, ahead of her offense coming out of high school. But since Logan Nisley has come into the lineup after the injury of Darian White, it really has helped the inside game for Nebraska because teams have to defend Nisley all the way out to 26 feet. And what that does is you got to make choices you put Potts and Markowski down low, and you got Shelley, and you've got Nisley on the outside. You can't double-team everybody, so you're going to have to put somebody on Nisley, and that's opened up the inside. It's made the offense a lot smoother. There's been more passing lanes. Uh, it really, it just has made the offense a lot better. So offensively, certainly, you can see uh, how that's made, the, made it better. But I want to talk about her defense. She had a great steal in that championship game, a couple of key rebounds, a couple of key reflections. And uh, as I said, she and Jess Petrie and Natalie Potts aren't 13th graders anymore. They're not freshmen anymore. They're, they're veteran college basketball players by this time in their career. We've talked a lot about her, but Alexis Markowski gets that program record double-double. Uh, she just, I don't know what else we could say about her, but she just continues to impress and, and rack up the stats. And she's just pretty unbelievable this season. Really unbelievable, and I think what people need to understand is her consistency. I think there were only two games all year so far in which she hasn't scored in double figures, but her rebounding numbers are off the charts. She's already passed Kelsey Griffin's rebounding numbers in three years. Kelsey Griffin was a runner-up for National Player of the Year here and an All-American, and uh, Markowski's already got those numbers. You think it's disappointing if she doesn't have double-digit rebounds at the half. Now think about that. I mean, she is just doing some amazing things on the inside, and she's very consistent. I really thought 
Uh, a key play in that entire tournament was that one series where Markowski missed four. I, I don't want to call them bunnies because people were wearing her like a shirt. But around the basket, missed four shots on one possession, and then I don't think she missed a shot the rest of the of the entire game. That's just who she's been. Her three point shooting is a threat. She draws a double team. She gets more attention than Kim Kardashian when she's down there, <laughs> and she just plays through it. And she's always, always enthusiastic. She's a leader with her words, and she's a leader with her action. She's a major reason Nebraska made it to that championship game. I love that. Well, how about moving forward now? Uh, you know, you and I talked before the tournament what could be done if this team went on a run. They made it to the championship game. You know, it's still, still some things to unfold throughout women's basketball, but certainly you got to think that they've improved their seating, right, before we head into Selection Sunday? Yeah, I, I absolutely think that they were. I think they were probably at a 9 or maybe an 8 heading into the tournament. Now I think they're no lower than an 8. And when I always talk about the G curve, the geography curve, and I always say that this year the tournament is so – overloaded with Western teams that they're going to have to put some people going, going West. You can't put all the, the whole East coast on the, on the West. So I think Nebraska is primed to go West if they can find a way to move Nebraska either uh, to an eight or a seven, you know, there's really not a lot of difference between six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if Nebraska is not an eight seed and gets down at a nine, it doesn't mean that they weren't thought of as a seven. It just means that, on that geography curve, they moved them around. But I would think Nebraska's probably played their way up to either a 7 or a high 8. I think probably a 7, but they played down to an 8 with that G curve. Um, you know, and the, and the other thing is is that when you look at that curve, they're probably one of the higher teams on that line, whereas maybe going in they were a 9 and maybe the third 9 heading into it. And that makes a difference also because you get a better matchup on paper. But – uh, look, Nebraska beat Iowa here on Super Bowl Sunday, and they took what's going to be a number one seed to overtime in front of a very pro-Iowa crowd in front of almost 19,000 on day four of four. They can play with anybody, and they proved that in that tournament. So I don't really care too much about their seeding. The Huskers just have to play the way they did in that tournament, and they'll be fine in the NCAAs. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Now, moving forward, being what they did in that tournament, it's got to give some confidence, some juice for this team. It doesn't matter who you who you match up against. You've proven that you can go play with the best of them with what you just did. Yeah, and, you know, that has to happen sometimes. I've been with some teams. Um, I remember the 1992 Southwest Missouri State Final Four team they lost their point guard right before the start of the conference tournament. And they had to install a point guard, and everything just clicked better when that point guard came in, and they made on a, went on a major run. In some ways, I think, because of what Nebraska has been through since that Iowa game on Super Bowl Sunday, they're getting a lot of confidence here. They know they can get stuff done on the road. They also know that they're vulnerable. So it kind of gets their attention, I think, for the team that they have to, to play to their maximum, and they know they can do it. I, I'm very excited to see what, what can happen. I think they, speak, they can make some noise in the dance this year. I'm with you, Coach. Can't wait uh, to see where it all unfolds, and uh, we'll find out the Huskers' destination coming up selection Sunday. Coach, it was uh, awesome listening to you and Grish throughout the weekend, and we'll look forward to much more, hopefully, uh, basketball play calls and those, those top calls uh, that we'll be able to listen to over the next couple of weeks. Uh, really enjoyed it, Jess. I had a lot of fun, and uh, let's keep dancing. I appreciate it. Thanks again to Matt Coatney joining us here on Sports Nightly. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. 
there's room at the table. Add more dollars to every acre. Incorporate value-added grain into your operation with Central Valley Ag. White corn, non-GMO, organics, find the right fit for your operation. For a limited time, enter to win a $5,000 bonus when you contract a minimum of 20,000 bushels of value-added grain. Enter at cvacoop.com. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at Hy-V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the Hy-V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week, it's the Perks price every day. With the Hy-V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for Hy-V Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. Hey, Mom. Yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay. I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. That's the best way I could describe how it felt for me when I would walk out of either the casino or the keno parlor, is that you just felt that wave of heat, that wave of oppression kind of hit you, that wave of dread. Mike is a former problem gambler. Right away, you would always know that that drive home would be the worst moments of why. Why did I do this again? Why can't I stop this? Help for problem gambling is free for Nebraskans and their families at Life After Bet. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Well, it is a busy night here in the Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Studio. We've got 
All kinds. Camden's in, Henry's in, Russ is in, Cole's in. We've got softball going on, baseball going on, and then we're getting set, obviously, for the men's basketball game coming up with the pregame show here. Um, just about 15 minutes or so before we will hand things off. Softball had an incredible comeback last night. They were down 5 nothing heading into the sixth inning. It end up, ends up going all the way to the 10th inning, and Alina fin Felix ends up walking it off in the bottom of the 10th. So they come back to win it. They're trying to make a comeback here. They are currently, oh, they just tied it all up 7 7. Billy Andrews, I believe, just gave. Um, the Huskers here uh, had a big hit to uh, tie it all up at 7-7. So uh, lots of action out there at Bolin Stadium. But we thought we'd uh, do a live listen in right now with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin out at Haymarket Park as the Huskers taking on Nichols right now. And defensively, this pitch is swung through. He was late on that fastball at 95 at the knees, one and two. Myers winds and fires. Slider called third strike. He snapped off a of beauty right on the outside corner. Carey caught looking. Second strikeout for Myers. That'll bring in Stokes. Rhett Stokes awarded by the league office for his efforts in the series last weekend. First pitch on the way to Stokes. Fastball right over. 94 at the knees. Against South Alabama, Stokes, nine hits to match his jersey number. The 0-1, that got a piece of that one, fouled back to the screen. 0-2, Gunn read that one at 97 on the scoreboard, 95 on the track man data. Here's the pitch. Slider just missed up and away, 1-2. and two. And this, you don't want Myers to get comfortable and in the rocking chair. You want to keep guys on base against him. The 1-2. Fastball low. They're going to appeal the swing. He did not go around. It's 2-2 two and two on Stokes. Really proud of Rhett, the way that he battled through the early part of the game on Sunday where he committed a couple of errors, grounded into a double play, but ended up being very productive at the plate. 2-2 two -two pitch. Hot shot just foul. Third base side. It's going to pound off the berm. Count holds it 2-2. Two two. Nobody on one out in the Husker third. Still no score between the Colonels and the Cornhuskers. Stokes back in the right side. Myers, the tall righty, winds and fires. Big curve, misses high, full count. See if Stokes can win this A-B and pass the torch to Brumbaugh. Myers kicks and deals the payoff. That's hit hard into left field. It's going to drop down for a base hit. So Rhett Stokes continues his hot hitting at Hawks Field. A solid base hit into left. First base knock for the Huskers today. 102 mile an hour line drive off the bat of Rhett Stokes. Back to the top of the order for Brumbaugh. Brum drew a walk and stole a base his first trip. Caden had a nice... Game on Wednesday against the Shockers. Had a couple of hits, both doubles. Myers works from the stretch now with Stokes on base. Pickoff comes to first, and Stokes just sneaks the hand back to the base. Rhett, no stolen bases on the year, but he's got good speed. Myers is a tough guy to steal against, though. Right-hander comes set. Here's the pitch to Brumbaugh. High with a fastball. That one ticked the gun at 98. And it's almost easy, yeah. I feel like. It's like it's not like his hat's falling off or no. he's stumbling off you don't the mound. Hear grunting. Myers set at the belt. Another pick to first. Close player. Stokes back in time. He's got really quick feet. Compared to Brody Brecht at Iowa, where you're just seeing like maximum everything yeah. from him, it's just a smooth from from Myers. Mechanics have a lot to do with that. Until he's been pitching a long time. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Brumball lays off another heater upstairs. 2-0. He's he's I mean, he's a big kid. He's six foot five, 205, but he, he's built like an athlete. Mike Silva hit a home run with him. The 2-0 pitch on the way. Down in the dirt, 3-0. 
If there is a knock on him, it's the walks and the control. There's a handful of scouts here tonight. Guns out. He's going to be a high draft pick in the 25 draft when he's eligible. There's no question about it. It's a live arm from the right side. 3-0, though, on Brumbaugh. Myers sends it in. That's a called strike. Not so sure about that one. Brumbaugh with a few questions for home. Man, that would have been two on one out for Silva. All right, Caden, fight through it. Myers holds at the belt. The 3-1 pitch. There goes Stokes. High and tight, ball four. Didn't matter. So Brumbaugh has walked twice against Myers. And for the first time tonight, the Cornhuskers have two on base and only one out. Going back to his outing against Nebraska last year, Myers did walk. Five. So it was a live listen in there with Ben McLaughlin and Greg Sharp out at Haymarket Park. Bottom of the third, no score. And I'm told Drew C Christo is absolutely dealing tonight. Meanwhile, we've got some fireworks going on at Bowling Stadium. Camden has been following along closely on that. What? Give us the update. What's going on with the Nebraska softball? Yeah, so we had the Billy Andrews single that scored two runs. And then Brooke Andrews just walked. And then Sydney Gray walked on four pitches. So it's 7-7, seven, seven, bottom third, bases loaded, two outs. So um, they had to come back last night and win this. Uh, hopefully they figured this out to where they're not giving us, you know, heart attacks every night uh, coming back from behind. But you've called a couple softball games. This team can pretty hit. They can hit, pretty, hit it pretty good. Yeah, they can. I mean, Billy Andrews is obviously really good at the top of the order. And then um, Sydney Gray has been doing really well. And Caitlin Canada has really turned it on of late as well. And it looks like... Redwell struck out swinging there for the third inning. Okay, so that will uh, take us, what, to inning, the fourth inning, right? Yep. So tied out at Bullen Stadium. All right, appreciate that update, Camden. Okay, we are going to work in our final break here on Sports Nightly. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back to wrap up our hour of Sports Nightly before we hand things over to Jake and Kent. So keep it here on Sports Nightly. Don't miss out on limited time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, see Lowe's.com for details. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl Champ Tony Veland. 
Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at nebraskachiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. I'm Jessica Kudu. Welcome you back to our final segment here of Sports Nightly. Before we'll hand things over to Jake and Kent for the pregame show leading into the Huskers first game of the Big Ten tournament here on quarterfinal Friday. They will be taking on Indiana. Round three, but a chance to advance to the Big Ten tournament for Nebraska on the line. So um, we've obviously talked a lot of hoops here, but just I uh, want to remind you, Selection Sunday coming up this Sunday. So the men's selection show will be at 5 o'clock. The women's selection show will be at 7 o'clock. Nebraska men's basketball team, they kind of couldn't really plan much of a watch party or anything because if there's a chance that they make it to the championship game, the Big Ten championship game on CBS leads into the selection show. So they might be in Minneapolis. You never know. But the women have planned a selection show party inside Pinnacle Bank Arena. So uh, fans are welcome to come. The doors open at 6 o'clock. That show starts at 7 o'clock. And so, again, expecting both basketball teams to hear their name called on selection Sunday but for the women they have decided Amy Williams told us yesterday here on Sports Nightly that they left it up to the team and said what do you guys want to do um, on selection Sunday and they it was unanimous that the entire team wanted to celebrate with Husker Nation so they have the marketing folks have done a great job and put it together so Matt Coatney will be emceeing that we have the big screen playing so um, you can celebrate with the Nebraska women's basketball team Team coming up uh, inside Pinnacle Bank Arena on uh, at seven o'clock, but doors open again on at six o'clock, and you can watch the men's selection show, and then have plenty of time to get on down to Pinnacle Bank Arena and celebrate with the women's team. So, hopefully, um, the women have done enough to move off that eight-nine seed. I know that um, you know we've we've talked a ton about it this entire week. The run that they put together. The resume and what they've done here, especially at the end of the season, which is what the committee want to see, wants to see. They want to see you playing your best basketball, and they have certainly put together their best basketball here over the last month or so. Jessica Keller put out a great thread highlighting the reasons why the women's team should be off that 8-9 seed. And, uh, you know, we talked to Jake earlier. We all think, too, which... I know we have got the Husker color glasses on that the men should be off that 8-9 seat, but hopefully with a couple more wins or win, maybe uh, they will get off that 8-9 seat as well. That way, if you do happen to win, you don't have to face a number one seat, which Tennessee did get upset today as well for the men's side, and they were a projected one seed. So there might be some chaos uh, unfolding here over this weekend as we await selection Sunday coming up. It's uh, oh, so exciting. Uh, so great that we're sitting here talking about both teams going into March Madness. Cannot wait. All right, update in Minneapolis. The game before the Huskers. 14:57 left in the second half and Ohio State leading Illinois by two. I believe it was was it 40, 50, 47 or three. I think I, they just took off the score bug, but it's a close game there um, and that uh, Huskers game will be about 25 minutes after this game. 40-38. There we go. Ohio State leading Illinois. All right, that is going to do it for me. We will hand things over to Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen with the pregame show leading into Nebraska, Indiana, and the Big Ten Tournament. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Have a great weekend. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at Woodhouse.com, where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. 
Nato Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Nato Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Nato Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! A few drinks at home after work, a couple of hits at a party with some friends, over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness, a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification on the Huskers radio network. Husker basketball is on the air. Nebraska postseason basketball is brought to you by John Henry's. The official plumbing, HVAC, and electrical partner of Husker Athletics. Nebraska comes the other way. Tominaga stops, pops, three ball. Bang! A ring! KC Tominaga with 28! Husker basketball is brought to you locally by... It's time for Husker Courtside. Williams in front of the Rutgers bench. Down inside, Alec for the jam! Took it to the hole off the pass, the mask. Huskers are up, six to nothing. The lid's coming off the ball. Portions of Husker Courtside are brought to you by Midwest Ford. Here's the voice of Husker basketball, Kent Pavelka. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to University of Nebraska basketball. Kent Pavelka along with Jake Muehlheisen. We are at the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota, site of the Big Ten postseason basketball tournament, and we are in rarefied form already. We can't wait for this one tonight. Nebraska with a double bye in this 14-team event as a result of their third-place finish in the Big Ten Conference regular season as the three-seed after two days here, finally playing tonight against the Indiana Hoosiers, uh, who did not get a double bye. They played last night, Indiana winning it in their first game here, winning last night, beating Penn State 61 to 59. And so for the third time this year, Nebraska will take on the Hoosiers, and the winner will go on to the semifinals uh, in this uh, tournament tomorrow. Semifinals or quarterfinals? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, first, semifinals or tomorrow? Semifinals. First things first, we are uh, courtside, all set up, ready to go for our game. But right now, underway, Ohio State and Illinois. And the winner will be the team that plays the winner of Nebraska and Indiana tomorrow. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, this is my first time being in this building. You know, my kids were excited that we were going to Target. I said, no, this is the Target Center. <laughs> but it's my first time here at this arena. It's a great it's a great venue. It's, it's It feels tighter than most of these big NBA venues where it, it's compact. I mean, we're right on the floor. But, but quite the atmosphere here for this first game and the second session of Friday's games. But I'm excited, man. And, and Nebraska has a big opportunity right in front of them. 
Well, as, as we speak, with eight minutes gone, 12 to go in the second half between Ohio State and Illinois, the Buckeyes are leading 52-44. to 44. Ohio State's got it going on since they fired Chris Holtman. And I'll be honest, I want to play Ohio State tomorrow. Oh, I do too. And it's one of those deals where, you know, Nebraska put ourselves in position. We get the double Kathy, also known as the double bye. Yeah, that's our chicken and Nick Thank reference you. for in the pregame portion there of the you go. podcast and tonight. So we put ourselves in that position where Ohio State, if they pull this one off, they're going to have their third game tomorrow. We just have our second. So I think we'll be better rested. We'll have some more, more uh, flow and feel of this arena. So it just puts us in a better spot. To try to try to win three games here in Minneapolis. Didn't take you long to get the Chicken Nick uh, double cap. Well, you set me it. up. <laughs> I didn't you teed me up. A... <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, w- there's more where that came from. But in the meantime, let's set the stage here. For me, Jake, there is nothing like March Madness. Better than Christmas for me. Uh, I, I include champ, championship week in March Madness. The, you know, it's it's just, this is an extension of the NCAA tournament the way I see it. The regular season is an extension of the NCAA tournament. Everybody looking for the 68 spots in the, uh, the big dance. But championship week, and I'll never get tired of it. Hopefully, uh, won't be, uh, we'll have many more of these to do. Normally, we're in either Chicago or Indianapolis. We've done postseason Big Ten tournaments in D.C. and in New York at Madison Square Garden, first time here. Um, but, yeah, there's nothing like it, especially when you're playing, with, you know, uh, meaningful games, and certainly Nebraska, what a season, 22-9, and nine, and uh, I was going to say what I'd settle for, but I won't say. I'll, I'll save that for yeah, later. Yeah, save that for later, but I'm right there with you. It's the best time of the year. You know, the cold weather is stopping. We're getting... So nice weather out, but we get just a ton of basketball in a short time frame. And you know, I arrived here on Tuesday with my family, and you can just feel the energy level in this town getting bigger and greater as this week has progressed where fans from every team are coming to Minneapolis. And you just look around this arena, and you have you know, different pods of different different fans in their, in their respective colors, and they're cheering for you know, whomever they want to play or against a team or against a rival. But I'm right there with you. This this March Madness, and this is an extension of it, it is the best time of the year. Well, I, I would describe it, as, for me personally, as being joyful. I mean, I'm just joyful right now. After the three-plus months, four months we've been through, through, through what is a, a really long regular season every year in college basketball, here you are on the doorstep of getting into the NCAA tournament for the first time in ten years. And before that, this one with... Uh, an opportunity to play for a championship. I, I don't know what's more impressive to win the regular season or the or the tournament title. Probably the regular season. Probably the regular yeah. season. That's a that's a whole body of work. But you know, to come to whatever city that hosts the Big Ten tournament or any conference tournament, for that matter, it's hard to win three, four, or five games in five days. It just is, and you know, it it can give you that confidence, that swagger, that momentum heading in to the bigger dance NCAA tournament and that's what we want we want to come in here get on a win streak and head into March Madness the real March Madness and the NCAA tournament and get that uh, and and get our first win and then see how many wins we can get in the big one the sweet thing about Nebraska this year in this event with a double bye it reminded me of decades ago when the Huskers used to play in the big eight tournament at Kemper Arena in Kansas City and we go down there and play on day one and too often lose and we'd be headed home, and we'd meet the Iowa State bus on their way to Kemper, and they'd be there all weekend with Kansas and Kansas State and Missouri. Uh, you know, they, they are the ones that got to stay till Sunday. Well, and now here, here, you know, it, I feel like this is, you know, this is, a, this is what that would have felt like, you know? You're, you're right on. And I'm telling you, we're going to have a huge turnout of Nebraska fans here. And for for a first time in a while, it's our turn to do that. We're coming in town on Friday, getting that double bye, and we're going to stay here for three days and have a lot of fun as Husker Nation, Husker fans, and as a program. Let us give you our first cash blast announcement. The Nebraska Lottery scoreboard brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery, reminding you cash, bla- cash blast. 
is back, and until April 2nd, you can buy a two-by-two -two ticket and enter to be one of our weekly winners of $5,000 or $500. Details at anylottery.com. Two-by-two -two top prize odds are one in 105,000. Just gads, gobs of uh, college basketball to report on. Uh, but we will give you what's happened here in Minneapolis earlier today. Wisconsin eliminated Northwestern 70 to 61. Second game won by Purdue, the one seed in this event. They sent Izzo and company, Michigan State and Sparty packing, winning 67 to 62. And then this is the third game of four underway right now at the Target Center with Ohio State leading Illinois by seven, 56 to 49, with 10 and a half minutes to go here in the uh, ball game. Huskers and Indiana for the third time this year. Tip-off scheduled for right around 8 o'clock. We'll be back at the Target Center with more on Husker Courtside. This is Big Red Basketball. If you're an unconditional, wholehearted, and ever-so-loyal Husker fan, you deserve to pay like one everywhere you go. With the free FNBO Husker Visa debit card. Fuel your fandom all season and beyond with a debit card just for you. It's free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get your free Husker Visa debit card at any branch or at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. As a fan, you wear your jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. There's a place for people like you. The Cox Fan Zone. Play NFL Pick'em and Collegiate Pick'em for a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card each week or even a $500 Visa gift card grand prize. Hey, Oscar fans, this is Greg Sharp. Say Fan Zone in your Contour Voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit Cox.com slash Fan Zone. Go Big Red. It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate, America. This is Ford Truck Month. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 bonus cash on F-150 plus a five-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Back at the Target Center. By the way, the capacity for this arena for basketball, the home of the T-Wolves, 18,798. I wonder how they get those odd numbers. I have no idea. Why is, it, yeah, why is it not just 100? I think Pinnacle is like 15,000-something one. Right? I don't get it. I don't understand. I, where do they get that? Somebody just decide, we'll add one on there? Uh, I guess. It's, but, I guess it's someone, an architect or engineer that's smarter than you and I figured that out. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's a, it's a beautiful facility. And, of course, Fred Hoiberg played here, worked in the front office here, part of his illustrious uh, NBA career. Started off, uh, Fred did, playing four years for the Pacers in Indianapolis, four years for the Bulls after that, then two years here in Minneapolis for the – T Wolves and then uh, worked in the front office. Now, now let's talk about Indiana here for a little bit. And the old saw about it's so hard to beat a team three times in a, in a single season. What, what's your feeling on that? Well, it, it is. And you and I had talked about it. I've talked to a lot of fans and friends that are here in Minneapolis. You know, why is it? Why is it difficult? It just and it's hard to pinpoint any one reason. But I think the mental aspect is that reason where. The team that's gotten beat twice has a little bit of, of revenge and and a little chip on their shoulder, but the flip side can also be true where a team that has won twice can have feel confident and feel some swagger coming into this game too, but it's just hard to win three games and beat a team uh, three times in one season. But this both teams are, are different even from the last time that we played Indiana. Indiana did not have the help of Xavier Johnson in Bloomington. He's back. He's playing well. He's their defensive guy. And he can score now, but he's not an elite scorer by any stretch of the imagination. And then last night, Trey Galloway did not play. And he's kind of there, in my opinion. He's their, their, uh, their, Bryce, their Bryce Williams. He does a little bit of everything. Not a, you know, not a great shooter, but it can knock him down. But, you know, he's 6'7", can guard one through four. I don't expect him to play. So we're... Uh, it's going to be a different team uh, than what we faced the first two times, and they're feeling confident. They've won, uh, they've, they've won six in a row, five in a row.
coming into Minneapolis, uh, including last night. So yeah. they're, they're going to be, and, and I think the, the other thing that also is true 